Welcome, everyone, at Praxis Center. I'm Brainerd Carey, the director of Praxis Center, as many of you know. And for those of you who are members, and that's all of you who are listening to this live, I just want to thank you for being in this group and being supportive of each other, because that's what's critical here, is support. It's critical for artists to get support uh, from each other, as well as the community, as well as mentors, teachers, gallerists, nonprofits, residencies, a whole host of things, as you know. So let's begin. Today I'm going to talk about finding collectors and building relationships with them. How do you find collectors? Where do you find collectors? So let's begin. The way you find collectors it's fairly simple. Um, I mean, there's a number of ways to do it, of course, but I'm going to give you a, a kind of direct route um, that I've, I've talked about before, but perhaps you haven't heard this before. And depending on where you are, let's say you're in a major city or just outside a major city, what's the museum near you? Because we're always looking for uh, where is your tribe, right? One of the tribes is here in this group where you ask questions and we edit things and, and, and there's live talks by different experts, of course. But where do you find collectors which are part of your tribe, part of the essential support system potentially for you? And they are, of course, where other art is. And one of those places is museums. So wherever you are, there's probably a museum somewhere near you. Obviously, if you're in a big city, you have more than one. If you're not near a big city, you may have uh, to drive a little bit, or there's a, a museum near you that's a smaller museum. Either way, that's fine. Here's where you find the collectors. They're going to the museums, but they're not just going to the museums the way everybody else goes. You may see them there on openings. So to begin with, I would definitely consider going to the openings of museums, but there's an even better way to do it. And that's to join a museum, become a member. Now, if you're in New York City, you're looking at MoMA, Guggenheim, Whitney, New Museum. Those are some of the major modern contemporary art museums, right? Um, I'm, I'm talking about becoming a member of those museums. Now, initially, to become a member as an artist is usually a good deal. It's usually... I don't know, MoMA, it's $35 a year. Um, there's, there's a number of ways to, to enter into the membership kind of paradigm, though. At MoMA and others, it's usually around that for artists, right? To be an artist, to prove that you're an artist, usually you have to show them that, you know, your artwork or, or uh, uh, an invite to a show that you had, something like that. However, when you become an artist member, you get invited to previews, other openings. There are benefits to that. You get invited to things that the general public doesn't get invited to. And the people who are going there are also other members at higher levels, and those are often patrons, trustees, and absolutely collectors. So if you want an even faster track to get there, you can be an artist member, and you will be in with a group that is uh, most likely going to previews of openings of, of, of the museum. However, what I would suggest is you look at the different levels of membership that are available for the museum. And you'll see there's membership levels starting probably at 35, 50, 75, 100, 150, 200, 500. You'll see different levels of membership. They don't go that high. There's, there's very rarely is there a museum that has one at $1,000. Memberships usually, even the most expensive, are around $100 or so. Sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less. So the first step I'm suggesting for today, whenever you hear this video, is to go to your local museum, find out what the levels of membership are, and either initially subscribe, become a member as an artist, or if you're feeling ambitious, subscribe at a higher level. And ask the member desk, what do I get for a higher level? What do I get for subscribing at 50 or $100, right? Um, and they'll tell you. They'll say, well, there's 
private parties, there's, uh, you know, preview for the openings, there's uh, other select events that you're going to be invited to. Ask them more. What kind of events? How many events are occurring a month or a year? These are questions that would be normal to ask if you're going to be a, a member on that level, which is 50, 100, or 150 for a museum. When you become a member on that level, and let's just talk about being a member at a, at a museum that's local to you, whether you're in New York City or Kansas or Spain, wherever you are, if you're looking at um, a membership that's $100 or more, you're, you're looking at an elite group already. Uh, and so the museum wants to cater to that elite group. And that is where collectors are. And that's where you can talk to them. You can go to openings and try to meet people that are at the artist membership level. But those kind of member openings are usually packed. There's a lot of people there. As you go further up into the level of $100 or more for museums I'm talking about, um, you'll see that it's suddenly much smaller group and it's a much more defined group. So this is where you will find collectors. And I'm also going to talk about building relationships with them. But for the sake of this talk today, that's an ideal way to an essentially buy your way in to a, a, an elite inner circle of collectors, of trustees, of supporters of the arts, of lovers of the arts, of people who love artists and who love supporting the arts. That's why they're at this museum at this level. So let's say you've done this because I worked with a number of artists who have done this. So let's say you've done this. You're at, you know, the Museum of Modern Art or you're in Spain or you're in, you know, um, Italy or you're in anywhere in the Midwest in the United States or LA, you're at, you're at the opening that you get to because you're a member at a higher level. And at that higher level, you now are in a rarefied group of people that are collectors and trustees. Well, there's a few things you can do. What one artist told me, which was something I suggested and I'm suggesting to you now, is go to those openings. And there'll usually be one person there, there will usually be at least one person there that is kind of the person who's managing that opening, who introduces people, who knows people. Uh, they'll be obvious because it's not a big group and they'll have a museum tag on them most likely. Go to them and say, hi, I'm a new member and I'm happy to be here. They'll be thrilled to see you. They treat you better. It's like having a first class you know, ticket on an airplane, I presume. You know, you're, you're, you're getting better treatment. They're, they're thrilled that you're a supporter of the museum. And they'll ask you a little bit about yourself right away. And you can say, I'm an artist. I'm here to meet, as, as uh, uh, an artist recently told me, she said, I'm here to meet patrons and, uh, and people who love the arts. And he said to her, oh, great, let me show you around and introduce you to people. And he literally brought her around the room and started introducing her to people, saying, hi, this is so-and-so. She's an artist. She's here to meet more people that are interested in the arts. And that is how you begin meeting people. You know, we could talk about other events, other types of places, and, and, and there's a million ways to kind of meet with kind of elite circles of people by buying your way into groups. But museums which is the focus of today, is really the fastest and most direct way. You're a visual artist or you're a multimedia artist of some kind. The people who are uh, patrons of the museums and trustees are your people. Those are your supporters. Those are your collectors. So again, you buy your way into a museum, go there, ask about membership levels. There'll be everything from artist membership at 35 up to, you know, 50, 100, 200. Ask the membership level desk. You can do this by phone or in person. Say, what do I get for a higher membership, like $100 a year? And they'll tell you special previews, parties, openings. And that's where you want to be. Because you could go to the artist openings that you get for $35, but they will be packed. They will be jammed with people. The openings and special preview parties for people who are paying around $100 more or less, depending on where your museum is in the world, will be more specialized. It will be a smaller group, and you can meet them there. So as I was saying, with the, with the woman I was just mentioning, 
Uh, she went in, and this is the model that I suggest. You go in to those meetings, and you'll say to them, "Who, um, who, who is the museum, you know, person here?" And you'll see they'll have a tag on. Introduce yourself to the to the member of the museum that's there at that party, who's most likely their job is to help and support the members at this level. Ask them to introduce you to people. Introduce yourself. Say you're an artist. It will be their job to introduce you to collectors. There may also be critics there. There, there will be powerful people in the art world there. When you meet them, um, you can say, you know, nice to meet you. Ask about what they do, why they have an interest in the arts, why this museum. Ask questions. They'll ask you questions too. Say you're an artist. Ask if you can exchange numbers. Say, I'd love to have you by for a studio visit. That's how it begins. And if it doesn't, if, if the first time you go, it doesn't feel like the right time to be so extroverted, just check it out. Just, you know, you, you have a higher membership. Let's say go to the private preview opening or whatever the kind of exclusive party is and just walk around. I'd suggest you don't go with your partner, husband, wife, because that tends to insulate you. When you go alone, your likelihood of meeting more people and engaging in conversations is much greater than when you go with a friend or a partner because that becomes insulating. It's intimidating to reach out to other people and you'll talk to each other. I'm sure you've all experienced that. I certainly have. It's, it's more comfortable to talk to your artist friend or if there's another artist there, another artist, than to uh, the crowd that's there. So, okay, that's how it begins. This is today's talk on using museum membership levels at higher levels to meet elite groups of people, which are collectors. And, and then when you meet them, exchange information and tell them you'd love to invite them to a studio visit and then have a studio visit with them. When you have a studio visit, you're not there to, to close a sale, to, you know, to sell something to them right away. You might, but you're there to build a relationship. And that's the next part of this really is about building relationships. They come to your studio, you make them feel comfortable. You can give them coffee, wine, tea, whatever you want, you know, something minimal. It's not, a, it's not about being entertained, but make them comfortable. You can talk to them about your work and talk to them about what they do. Do they collect work or not? That's how a relationship begins. When the collector leaves your studio, whether they, let's assume they haven't bought anything, they're now on your mailing list, You'll see them again at another preview opening. You can have them over again when you make newer work or have more to show. With almost all collectors as well as galleries, it's never, hi, nice to meet you, come to your studio, I'll buy this now. They're getting to know you. They wanna build a relationship with you and you wanna build a relationship with them because you'd like them to buy work from you over time. So that's the idea here, is that someone is buying work from you over time. Um, essentially, that is the talk for today. I want to answer some questions, if you have any, about this process. But one other thing I wanna say about this process is, so let's say you become a member at a museum at a higher level, and at that point, you uh, are, are there meeting people and you think, gosh, I, I don't know anybody here. One way to find out who's there is go to the museum website and look at who the trustees are, look at who the board of directors are, and look at the staff. There's often pictures of everyone. If there isn't pictures of the trustees, look up each one. There will be pictures online. I mean, this is homework if you wanna meet those kind of people. So then you can print out their images and their names. When you go to that party, you'll recognize them. They'll be there. Some trustees will be there, some of the board of directors will be there, the, you know, the director of the museum, curators may also be there because they also want to curry favor with this group. It's a very powerful group. So that's a way to do your research a little bit beforehand. And um, the idea of, of course, meeting these people at these kind of upper level membership openings is so that you can invite them to your studio. And again, just to reiterate, once you're at the, at the preview event that you'll get to by being a member at a higher level, 
you ask a museum member there, and you'll see, not a museum member, you'll ask a museum staff member there, who'll have a badge on saying staff member. Say, hi, you know, this is who I am. I just, I just became a member, and I'd like to meet some people. They will introduce you to people. You can even say, I'd like you to introduce me to people. They will introduce you. When you meet people, ask them about what they do, and um, tell them about what you do, and invite them for a studio visit. That's how this process begins. And the studio visit isn't a process where you just sell them something, of course, right away. It's you show them your work. You're building a relationship. That's how it begins. You can invite them back again, go to more openings. You will become a known artist in that circle. And, uh, and that's how you begin building high profile, powerful collectors. Okay, let's take questions if there is any. Um, yeah, Julian, welcome. Hey, Kristen, welcome. Uh, and everyone, welcome. Um, Randy, okay, so I don't see a lot of questions here. You guys can ask afterwards in the comments, of course. And if you're not a member of this wonderful and amazing tribe here at Praxis Center, um, you can become one and interact with myself on questions like this, as well as other expert lectures that come nearly every week to this special private group here. Um, so that's the talk for this week. I want to end it by saying thank you all for being part of this group because what really means a lot to me is your support for each other. When I see someone post a question or, or, or post something that's about a vulnerability and everybody answers, you know, this is the meaning of a, of a community of support, but of course this is a very special and specific community because you're all artists and are supporting one another. So I just want to thank you all for being being part of that. And um, great, Julian, you'll be a New Yorker starting this summer. What museum would I recommend to be a member of? Well, visit them all, see which one you like. The Whitney is a great museum for contemporary art. MoMA is also a great museum. Uh, as is the Guggenheim and the New Museum. I would focus on for now, and again, make this your, your own decision. Go to all those museums, MoMA, Guggenheim, Whitney, New Museum. The New Museum and the Whitney are kind of considered sort of the hippest museums. They're showing art that's by living artists on a fairly regular basis. So I would go to both those museums, see which one you like better. Ask the membership, compare membership prices at museums. Go to the membership desk there and say, what are the different levels and what do I get for those levels? And make your decision based on that, as well as just how you like the museum, the vibe and the art of the museum. Um, great, so um, uh, isn't, the, isn't the MoMA too elite? MoMA is absolutely not too elite. You know, so let me make it really clear what's happening um, when you when you do something like this, because the artist that I was mentioning before, she joined MoMA, and I think it was a hundred and fifty dollar level. It's 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 not too elite, and and you're in the elite group suddenly. You'll go to an opening that's a private preview, that's a small group of people. You'll ask the museum staff member to introduce you to people. Yes, there will be millionaires there and billionaires there, as well as people who make far less. And you'll be introduced to them, and they're simply collectors of art. You know, you want to meet people who are wealthy enough to buy art easily. So um, MoMA, Guggenheim are absolutely not to, um, what was the word, to elite. Uh, at all. That's where you want to be. These are the people you want to meet. If you try to go with much lower level museums um, that are really small, I mean, that could work too, but why shoot so low when you can go high? You know, these are, these are all people who simply love art. It's not that you have to be wealthy to know them. They know artists are artists and they're in their studio making work. They're not millionaires. They want to meet you. They want to support you. So, um, so I hope that answers your question. Um, let's see. And, and I see a lot of people are here. Great to have you aboard. Um, and, um, yeah, wonderful to have you guys all aboard. So I'm just going to reiterate the talk very briefly here. Today is about how do you meet collectors and build relationships with them for your art. And what I'm suggesting is whether you're in a big city anywhere in the world or a small town anywhere in the world, 
find what museums are local to you, go there and ask them about membership levels. And there will be artist levels, there will be general public levels, there'll be family memberships. Ask them about ones that are a little higher up, when they get above $75 and $100 a year, right? And ask them, what are the membership benefits? Pick one of those memberships at a museum that's at a level where you start getting invited to private parties and special events. I mean, they're cool events to go to, period. You get previews of shows, there's no crowds, there's talks, you know, it's, it's, your, it's your world. Um, so again, I'm summarizing this talk. You go to these, these uh, events then, you become a member at let's say 75, 100, whatever you choose at whatever the museum is closest to you. And then when you're there, you ask the staff member from the museum that will be walking around the room, there's not gonna be a ton of people there, even at MoMA, uh, you're asked them to introduce you to other people, introduce yourself, say, hi, I'm you know, so-and-so and, -so and um, I just became a member. And they'll say, wow, thanks for being here. So happy to have you aboard. What are your interests? And you tell them, I'm an artist and I'd like to meet more people here who are interested in art, um, collectors and others. They'll most likely, walk you right up to people and you can say can you introduce me to people go alone without a spouse or a partner because that will make it more insulated and uh, you'll have less chance of really engaging with people when you engage with people there ask them about what they do what art they like why they like this museum and then tell them a little bit about who you are ask if they want to come to a studio visit or be on your mailing list most likely they will say yes then go see them, get on their um, radar and have them over to your studio. That's what the relationship's about. You want them over to your studio, you wanna show them your work. You may not sell work then, don't assume that you're gonna close a sale or push too hard. You're just meeting them, you're showing them your work. You're trying to find out, do they like this work? Just talking with them. And then keep in touch with them, keep going to more openings, you will build a, uh, a powerful circle of collectors around you in a very elite group. Doesn't matter whether it's a small museum, large museum, small town, big town, these are people who support museums. Museums are after these people at high membership levels because they know they most likely have money and at the very least, they have a strong interest in the arts. So let's see. Um, LACMA is a good choice. Maybe at the 250 level? Absolutely, LACMA's great. Um, yeah, you can ask LACMA, what do you get for the 250 level? It would be something powerful for sure. They'll, they'll tell you, oh, you get this and this, and there's a, you know, a party at the director's home. I mean, you'll be amazed at the people you'll be introduced to. So yes, LACMA, check out the different membership levels. Ask the membership desk what you get at different levels. You can always move up a level if 250 is a lot. So go to LACMA, ask by phone or in person, what is um, what you get for the different levels, and uh, and then make your choice based on that. And of course, there's you know SF MoMA. There's lots of lots of museums uh, on the West Coast and, and LA and San Francisco as well. So okay, I guess that's the talk for today. You guys can always ask more questions in this thread, and um, I just want to thank you again for being part of this group in Praxis Center. I want to thank you guys for supporting each other because I think that's huge and it's what makes me so happy when I answer questions on a daily basis is seeing how all of you have supported each other. Uh, you can also suggest any other kind of talk you'd like me to do here. That's how many of these talks come about that I do weekly is people have suggested, oh, could you do a talk on this or that or something else? So don't hesitate to suggest more talks and I want to thank everybody for being here. Uh, Julie and Annie, um, and, 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 and so many there. So, um, so thank you all for being in this live talk. Thank you all for being members. Uh, I wish you all well in your studio today, wherever you are. And if you have any questions, you can always ask them in this thread and you can always suggest more talks you'd like me to do. And of course, I'm here to answer your questions as are other experts in the group and more are coming on every week. There'll be um, someone coming up talking about social media and galleries and, and, and more and more all the time. So uh, thank you again, everyone. And I wish you all a wonderful, wonderful day.